This right here is the Void Waker, one of the strongest PvP weapons in Old School RuneScape. The weapon can be created entirely inside of the wilderness, and that is why I decided to make a new level 3, lock it into the wilderness, and not look back until I've created one of my own completely from scratch. My account is a Bronze Man, which is a mix of an Iron Man and normal account. If I get an item once, I can buy it as much as I want from the Grand Exchange, so I will be able to access that area as well. I can both kill NPCs or PK players for upgrades, as long as I've looted an item and once it's open for purchase. So let's get started. Last episode we started off the wilderness boss grind by getting Klaus of Callisto from RTO and shortly thereafter we got the first Void Waker piece. After that we continued on to Spindle where we got the Fangs of Venonaris for the Webweaver bow which we also made. And after creating the Webweaver we almost instantly got the second Void Waker piece. That means, as it stands, the only Void Waker piece we are missing to create the weapon is from Calvarion. Today's episode need no long introduction. We only have two simple goals we want to reach in this video. The first one is 1000 Revenant Knight kills on task to try and get the Vigoras Chain Maze. Second goal is, regardless if we get the Vigoras Chain Maze or not, to get the last Void Waker piece from Calvarion. So let's start off with Slayer and get a Revenant task. We are starting off the Slayer grind very strong in this video with 150 tasks completed for 375 points. My goal is pretty much going to be to stack up on as many Slayer points as I possibly can and then skip for as many of the Revenant tasks that I can get. I need around 9 or maybe 8 of them to reach 1000. Hopefully that is not going to take too long. I actually love that they made the Larens keys tradable, and you can actually see their real value now that they've adjusted a bit. 143,000 GP for one single key. That is so good. Really puts in perspective how profitable Wilderness Layer is. Oh, 85 ranged. Almost missed it. So that is a pretty nice milestone. Five more levels, which we might actually get in this video. And we're 90 ranged only in the Wilderness. And that's it, the first Revenant task, 125 of them, that is a pretty hefty task. I think the minimum is 100 and the highest 150, so right in the middle. I am not entirely sure why, but Runelight missed a couple of kills on the tracker, but this is the last one of the task, 125 Revenant Knights killed, but it only tracked 121. No uniques, the money is great here as always, of course, but I will actually go for a thousand kills on the Runelight tracker, which means if it misses a couple of kills here and there, I might go for like 1,100 in the end. Another Revenant task that did not take that long at all, 115. <gasps> no way! No! Oh, we actually got it! Oh my! We got the Vigorous Chain Maze after no time at all! I've only been here for like 200kc or something. It's two tasks of Revenant Knights. Let's have a look at the collection log. This is ridiculous. We have every single weapon. The only things we're missing really is the emblems. That is, I can now use this for Cal Calvarion. I can't even speak. I can't get my words out because this is so incredibly lucky. On top of having the Vigoras now, I of course have the Claws of Callisto, which is the upgraded version of the Vigoras, the Ursine Chain Maze. Unfortunately, I need 70 attack to be able to use this. So until I get 70 attack, I will train attack with this weapon on Calvarion. I will have to use the normal Vigoras Chain Maze, which still is just incredibly good at Calvarion compared to anything else. I guess after all this time, this is it. We're going for the last Void Waker piece with our new Vigoras Chain Maze. And I actually have a couple of things I want to mention before we get into the grind. I want to get, of course, 70 attack for the Ursine Chain Maze, but we also need 75 attack. So we have both the Ursine Chain Maze down here. There are so many weapons in the game. And then at 75, we have the Void Waker. So even if I get really lucky here on Calvarion, I actually still need 75 attack. So there are actually going to be two different scenarios that could happen. Either I get really lucky and I just spoon the Void Waker piece. In this case, I will actually go back to Revenants to train my attack all the way to 75 to try to get the missing emblems that we have. If not, however, I get all the way to 75 attack just by killing Calvarion while grinding the last piece. I'm just going to be done at that point. And we just have the Void Waker and we've completed the challenge. And of course in the last video I did some Calvarion, so we're starting on 11kc, but we have absolutely nothing on the collection log. 
This weapon is absolutely incredible at this boss. 27 hits and we are hitting really consistently all the time. Of course, the dogs will die very easily as well. So this is going to be an absolute treat to use at this boss. Oh, there we go. That was the max hit. 31 with only 63 strength. Of course, put it up to 75. But yeah, that is really good. And as I said, the hits are just so consistent that these kills are way faster than the Web Weaver bow and the first drop of the video, Magic Logs. And of course, for every strength and attack level that I get on this grind, it's going to go even faster. So after timing a couple of kills, it seems like the average kill with my strength level and attack and the Vigoras Chain Mace is around one and a half a minute, which is better than the Web Weaver bow. And that is not with the Ursine upgrade yet. And of course, way worse stats uh, than my ranged. Oh! Oh! No way! What? <laughs> what is with this account, man? Oh my god, 25 KC. Oh my... All this preparation. And this is what happens. 25 KC... Just look at the collection log. Nothing except the Void Waker blade. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we're making the Void Waker. When I took on this challenge to make a Void Waker from scratch on a Bronze Man account locked into the wilderness, I did not anticipate that I would get this lucky. We have on RTO 168kc for the Void Waker piece and two claws of Callisto. For Spindle and Venonades, we have 188 KC for the Void Waker piece. And now on Calvarion, we have 25 KC for the last piece. These are all one in 912. That is just, I don't even know what to say. And of course, for Revenants, as you guys already know, we have all the weapons in the 1678 KC. But let's go ahead and finish this. We still, of course, need 75 attack, as I mentioned earlier. But let's go ahead and make the Void Waker with Madame Sicaro right here. You need 500k as well. This is an absolutely monumental moment. That is the Void Waker unlocked on the Bronze Man account. And of course, as I said, I need 75 attack. So we are going to be doing what I talked about earlier. We are going to Revenant and I'm going to be doing this off task. We're going to be killing either knights, maybe dark beasts, maybe dragons, I guess we'll see, all the way to 75 attack. And hopefully we can actually get the last of these emblems. They're all 1 in 4400 drop rate except for the ancient emblem, but uh, we can get this one from Maledictus. Besides the chance of getting those last emblems that I need for the collection log, we of course will make a lot of money doing this, and uh, that is going to fund my future PKing on this account, so that is an added benefit. You know, I'm being a bit back and forth right now, but I have been at Revenant Knights for just a bit now, and I feel like these are a bit too tanky for my Vigoras Chainmates, and I could get way better combat rates at maybe some of the other Revenants at not that much of a worse drop rate. I'm getting around 47,000 attack experience an hour, and I would like to try some lower tier ones, which still have a decent drop rate of the emblems, but maybe can give me quite a lot more experience an hour. Actually finding a world where no one was camping these orcs was actually quite a challenge, but we finally found one. The drop rate of an emblem here is 1 in 4840, meanwhile the other ones were 1 in 4400, and I do think these are killed way faster, so actually getting the emblems should be faster this way. Aside from the fact that this is way more chill as I take barely any damage compared to the Revenant Knights, the experience rate is vastly higher, look at that, 75,000 experience an hour. That is just way too good to pass up on. And of course, these are the drops that we want to see. All of this is going straight to supplies to future PKing. Another added benefit to this spot is that I am way more unlikely to actually die, because this is below 30 wilderness and I have a ring of wealth, and you can actually use a menu entry swapper, swap the left click to grand exchange, and I can basically just mouse over this, and if I left click it, I teleport right away to the GE. 
Oh, oh my god. No, that is not the ancient statuette I need. Okay, but I'll take it. 2 million GP. It says item unlocked for the first time, but I already have it on my collection log, which I don't know how that happened. But uh, yeah, nice. A duplicate statue. We are dead. The first death of the grind that is like a million down the drain because I lost my avarice. The first milestone coming in, 65 attack, 5 more levels to go, and we can use that Ursine Chain Maze. It is time to do something a bit risky, we are 67 attack, and everything has been going good so far, and there are not too many PKers, but usually I charge the Vigoras Chain Maze with around 700 attacks, and it is now time to charge it with 2000 attacks, and stay there for the entirety of that duration. I just want to try and build as big of a looting bag as possible. This is extremely risky. I might die. It is very likely. But I want to try the challenge and see if I can do it. The main goal, of course, is the experience. And staying here for as long as possible without banking is, of course, the best experience I could get. So that is why I'm doing this challenge. Even though I might lose money by dying, it is worth it for the experience. But hopefully I don't die. So we just hit the first level, 68 attack, and we have how many charges left? We have 1,364, and this is what the looting bag is looking like right now, 900k risk. With all of that loot and what I am equipped with, we are risking well over 2 million right now. Okay, we have the first PK attacking me, and I think I should be able to escape, because he doesn't have teleblock, I think, and I only need to run down a bit... I'm not going to reset my stats or anything, I can escape people if I get attacked, because I mean I would die regardless, but uh, I can't do anything right now to restock. With barely any supplies left, we just hit the halfway point, and that is 1000 ether used, let's have a look at the looting bag. How much have I gained? 1 point, nearly 2 million GP so far. Oh shit, we have a peak air. He's walking, he missed his teleblock, splashed, and we get the teleport, easy as that. There is literally with my supplies now no chance that I can really stay there longer, so I unfortunately would just have to end it here. I at least could stay there for around 1050 ether and we got 1. nearly 3 million worth of loot. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that, that's a pretty good trip. Bro, look at this, this guy is... <laughs> and he's dead this guy was so sneaky he was camping under that other guy for a while it's probably the same guy's two accounts yeah that was <laughs> that was so sneaky i have an escape i want to try when i go out here and you go to the right all these trees are blocking i saw this on a telecon video if you haven't seen his revlocked account go check it out but yeah this works fine i mean you kind of could just get passed around and you can escape Yes! Let's go! Uh, the 8 million effigy! Ancient effigy has been achieved. One of the actual effigies that I am missing on the collection log. That means we only need the lowest tier one and I think like the 5 million one. It has been a long time, but that is now 70 attack achieved and it is time for the Ursine Chain Maze upgrade to be made. The Ursine Chain Maze has 4 Crush Bonus and 8 Strength Bonus upgrade over the Vigoras Chain Maze, so this is actually quite a massive upgrade. Let's pay 500k and get the Ursine Chain Maze unlocked, and also let's put some Ether into it. It looks so good, and this of course also has a special attack, which is really good for escaping. It's a bleed effect that also removes Run from your opponent. They can't activate it for a couple of seconds, so if I hit this back on a PKer, I can escape really easily. Check this out. One hit with the Ursine Chain Maze, he is now a walker, and I can easily escape. The power of this weapon to escape PKers is insanely good. Let's quickly finish off the last levels for the Void Waker. 71 attack. 72 attack. 73. Ancient Crystal, 150k. That is actually pretty rare, 1 in 1,600, not as rare as the totems I need, but I already had it on the collection log, so not too great. Oh, we have another ancient statuette. I actually had to go over to Dark Beasts because orcs were absolutely packed. I guess that paid off. One more level to go, 74 attack. Another ancient crystal, I'll take it. 
And the final level is about to be hit. 75 attack has now been achieved. Didn't even get a pop up for that. I feel slightly scammed. But uh, let's go ahead and go to the bank and get the Void Waker out. It's actually crazy how fast I've been able to do this challenge. I have only played 9 days and 13 hours. And I've gained every single Revenant weapon. Including the Web Weaver upgrade and the Ursine Chain Maze. And now we can equip the Void Waker as well. For the final challenge being completed. And there we have it. That is the best PKing weapon in the entire game. Now equipped on the Bronze Man locked to the Wilderness. This is my collection log right now on Revenant, and that is where I'm going to be leaving it. This is all the loot that I got from the kills that I did. But before we take this Void Waker for a spin, I want to get my strength level up. And this time, I'm just going to be AFKing monsters in the wilderness with the Ursine Chain Maze to level it up, because Revenants require a lot of attention. I decided to go with Elder Chaos Druids for my AFK training method and we get an actual unlock for the account. That is really cool. Elder Chaos Top. I'm not sure I'm going to be using this for really anything, but it's cool to have. And just like that, 70 strength achieved and we are now done with combat training. In the beginning of the video when I did Walden and Slayer to get the Revenant tasks I needed, I got 17 Larin's keys. So we're going to be opening them first, selling all the loot that we got from Revenant and these keys, and then use that for PKing supplies. No Dagonite pieces so far, and we're down to the last keys, raw swordfish unlock, and we got no Dagonite pieces from that, but we made 2.5 million. Everything has been sold, we now have a 32 million cash pile on the account. And it's time to buy some PKing supplies. Whether you like it or not, this is the peak performance of old school RuneScape PKing setups. I am going to be using this gear right here, which is definitely not optimal. And we have the Void Waker as a special attack weapon and even a just straight up melee weapon sometimes. I think this is the best chance I have to kill someone if I kind of surprise them with a Void Waker spec instead of using it all the time. And Dragonstone Bolts Enchanted can hit ridiculously high as my range level is also pretty decent. You might have also noticed by now I am in Bounty Hunter, which was just recently released and could not have had a better timing for this account. It is super easy to find fights in this area and there is no protection prayers and no freezes allowed in this minigame, which makes it a perfect area for me to try to get some cheesy kills and just easier PKing time for me as someone who is not the most seasoned PKer. We have our first fight, King Hydra 2. Let's see how this goes. I think the only way I can get a KO on this account is if I get a big bolt hit into the Void Waker spec. Let's see if we can get... Okay, we have one hit, and now we try the Void Waker spec. 29, not a max hit. And 17. Okay, so I just mostly wanted to try the specs out, see what I could hit, so I can hit more than 30 at least. So after getting a couple of matchups, I've realized basically everyone is 99 HP, just full on PKing accounts, which of course makes sense. My account is not really built good for PKing, unfortunately. So that happens. I get absolutely KO'd by most people who I fight because they are really built for PKing. And I just basically went for the Void Waker. Oh. Bro, what are these hits? Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> So after getting completely one shot twice in a row, we finally found someone that I could have a decent fight with, this guy named Mozart, and I actually fought him I think like five times in total, and we had really good fights, both of us were kind of close to dying multiple times, and these were the most fun fights I had probably during the entire time, we had some really close calls, both me almost KOing him and him KOing me. And unfortunately, these were very far and few between. At my level, I just don't really have the combat stats to be able to kill people frequently. So having these fights, even though this guy probably had a good advantage over me, was pretty fun to do. Oh my god, that was definitely a chance. I hit 18 with the 30 HP. I could have hit that. That could have been the first kill. Oh, that's a big bolt. Go for the Void Waker. Come on, Void Waker, do something. 27. Oh, I could have hit that. He had 7 HP left. Another chance. No way he hit that. Wait, I'm alive? Yo, I'm... <laughs> what? <laughs> what? How am I not dead? You know what? Whoever I get as the last target, this guy right here, is going to be my last fight because I just feel way too much like a prey. I can't really do anything here. 
My account is just not built for this, so let's see what the last fight's going to be like. I'm fighting to the death. I have no food left, so it all comes down to the RNG of my bolt procs right now. Can we get a good one? Or am I just going to die? It's looking like I'm dead at this point. He is just getting unlucky hits, though, at this point. There we go. I go down for the last one, and we don't really lose too much every time we die. But uh, yeah, this is impossible. But you know what? Even though we might have not built the optimal PKing account for this combat level, we did complete the goal of this series, which was to make the Void Waker from scratch locked into the wilderness on a Bronze Man from level 3. And on top of that, we also made the Ursine Chain Maze. We got the Thamoran Scepter, unfortunately not upgraded, and the Web Weaver Bow. So there's not really much to complain about. We completed the series and more. And with that, I officially call this series completed. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you want to be updated with my future series or my own drop rate videos, which I'm currently working on. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.